Hello and good morning everyone. My name is Sarah Waters and I'm a second year PhD student here in the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. I'd like to begin with an apology first of all. I wasn't able to connect my mic in Adobe Connect and as a result have had to pre-record this presentation. I hope I may be able to rectify this today and so be more responsive verbally and more personal than just a voice from behind a screen in the questions and answers and feedback time at the end of this presentation. But if I'm not able to, I will of course be available via the chat box with written responses. I'm also happy to take any feedback or instant responses to the presentation via Twitter. And you'll see my Twitter handle on this first page. That's at SRA Waters. I'm keen to engage with new technologies and learning approaches in my teaching and the use of Twitter for live tweeting information, course hashtags to allow for engagement before and after lectures, and the interaction that it encourages from students who might otherwise not have had the chance to be vocal in class as some of its many merits. The use of Twitter also provides continual feedback and engagement from students and those outside of the university bubble, which I believe is invaluable. Although social media, like anything, brings with it dangers such as the blurring of boundaries, overall, the merits of the interaction it encourages outweigh the issues. I've also been part of Twitter projects, which use Twitter accounts to recreate literary characters, such as the Burt Beck Our Mutual Friend project. Social media projects such as these allow for an integrated learning approach, and one which organically breeds engagement from lecturers and students alike, ensuring a collaborative experience. So please do feel free to engage with this presentation, both during and after via Twitter, as well as here on Adobe Connect. The teaching I wish to reflect on in this session is a micro-teaching class I recently gave. As with many others on this course, my higher education teaching experience is limited although I have had experience of teaching at several secondary schools, both in Buckingham and Vista, as well as being involved in the running of postgraduate seminars. If you would like to see the full presentation I gave for the micro-teaching session, please click on the small slide that you can see in the left-hand corner on slide 3 of the, of the PowerPoint version of this presentation. You won't unfortunately be able to access it direct from this YouTube link. Although I was giving a class on a specific area of Shakespeare studies, I also wanted to draw on the cross-disciplinary elements of the subject matter I was considering, given the interdisciplinary group of students attending the class. This relates to the second of Chickering and Gamson's seven points, that is, the creation of learning communities and groups. As an interdisciplinary researcher myself, I am keen to work between disciplines and encourage students to do so too, both within the lecture context and also taking it further to consider the application of specific subject knowledge in the wider context of the real world. Furthermore, a group of students from a cross-section of disciplines bring different subject approaches together and can engage topics and discussions in ways that single discipline students working together cannot quite capture in the same way. The micro-teaching session was designed to encourage group engagement and as such I included several group activities. The first demonstrated the importance of building the learning communities I've just discussed as I asked students to break into twos and define adaptation and appropriation in a minute before feeding back. This allowed different discipline definitions to be mixed and therefore the students themselves were able to come up with a definition of appropriation that was meaningful to them and could then be applied in a specific Shakespeare context. It also gave opportunity to those who were less confident to share ideas and in a larger space it gave them a smaller opportunity in a less intimidating space and way before reporting back with their other peers. With the ice broken, as it were, between students and tutor alike, I then moved on to showing them a video of an IKEA commercial. This may sound strange in the context of a Shakespeare lecture, but bear with me. If you're curious as to which advert I'm referring, I've provided the link on the PowerPoint that's on slide 4, which you can see at the moment, so you can check it out at your convenience later on. The video of someone dreaming about beds also features lines from Shakespeare's The Tempest, and I wanted to show the students the way in which the theoretical study of appropriation of Shakespeare in a lecture hall can be applied in the wider world, as it appears on their TV screens. This combines the Brooks graduate attributes of digital and information literacy, given the multimedia format, academic literacy, that is, applying subject-specific skills within an academic context, and taking that knowledge beyond the classroom, and active citizenship, 
questions since it shows how subject-specific training can be engaged in local and global contexts. Furthermore, this activity also demonstrates the way in which, through reflection of my practice in the light of critical literature, I have begun to change my teaching approach. This activity can be seen in the context of the Kolb cycle through the use of a concrete example, which I hope the students were able to relate to and respond to. Incorporating a pragmatic as well as a theoretical approach in a practice-based discipline such as theatre studies is not uncommon, but the study of appropriation and adaptation more generally tends to be a theory-driven discipline, but on reflection it seems that the incorporation of interactive elements and real-life examples demonstrates the importance of the topic beyond the classroom and shows its applicability. When planning the session, I made sure I set, as well as my own aim and objective, a clear learning outcome, as you can see on the screen here. This was then supplemented by a further learning outcome, that which I termed above and beyond. That is, a learning outcome aimed at students who expressed a keen interest in the subject, or those who were high achievers and needed further material to push them, but of course accessible to all. Although I didn't begin the class articulating a learning outcome, I hope in the course of the seminar it became clear and remained with the students following the class. Conscious of providing concrete examples for the students beyond an advert, I also brought in different, different books which illustrated Shakespeare and appropriation, from children's versions of Hamlet to Shakespeare's Star Wars. I wanted to engage with different kinds of learners, kinesthetic, visual, oral, and read-write through a variety of tasks in the seminar, while ensuring the main learning outcome remained central. It was good to be able to gauge student engagement and interest in the subject matter of the class through verbal interactions and group-like activities, as well as through the more subtle but just as important visual signs such as smiles, eye contact, and body language conveying concentration. This micro-teaching task was followed by a time for verbal and written feedback, which was very valuable. This feedback came from peers, as the students of the class were fellow PhD students, as well as a colleague examiner. This enabled me <coughs> This enabled me to reflect on the session in the light of the feedback I received, as well as my own personal reflections on the seminar. The positive feedback demonstrated to me where the strengths of my teaching practice currently are. For instance, I had good feedback concerning my use of audiovisual material on the group activity at the beginning of the session and received positive comments on the different kinds of activities I included in the seminar, which adequately catered to different kinds of learners. However, in terms of future practice in higher education teaching, there are clear areas that I need to work on, as highlighted by both verbal and written feedback. I need to make sure, for instance, I pitch my teaching at the right level for my students, bearing in mind the dangers of assuming pre-knowledge of a subject area. This is particularly pertinent in the context of an interdisciplinary group of students. Cultural knowledge and pre-knowledge must also be taken into account, given the growing global community of learners that the student population represents. Both of these chime with the second point of Chickering and Gamson, that of building learning communities, and this is a factor which I need to reflect on when preparing lecture material and content. I also need to be conscious of different student needs and ensure I give sufficient time for student feedback and interaction so that the process of teaching is truly a dialogue. I believe through the combination of lecture style and group work activities, this valuable feedback which I have had a chance to reflect on can be implemented. Brookfield highlights the importance of critical reflection of one's teaching through four key lenses and, considering my teaching in a critically reflective light, has highlighted to me the value of considering my teaching from a number of angles. My experience as a learner of engaging lectures with limited group work of course affects my teaching practice, but I am also aware of the need to cater to different student needs, as not all students learn best through lectures. Furthermore, sitting in on colleagues' lectures has enabled me to witness a range of good teaching practices. As I have highlighted, the feedback on my teaching practice by learners and colleagues has given me invaluable pointers on how to take my teaching practice forward. Viewing my teaching in the light of the Kolb cycle, I hope it is clear I have begun to try to reflect on the critical literature 
and the way in which it can benefit and be implemented in my teaching practice. I look forward to continuing to learn from colleagues, learners and critical li literature alike as my own experience as a teacher in higher education grows. Thank you for listening to me and I'll come back now ready for a time for questions, answers and feedback.